Hello, true art believers, and welcome to this week's installment of the Artist Interview Series. This week's guest will be artist Samantha Clark. Samantha Clark is a St. Louis-based painter who uses an infinity palette to create her bright, bold pieces. She works in her home studio with her one-year-old in tow, which makes for a very non-traditional art making process. Her work is a celebration of levity, color, and experimentation. Before we start, make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell. Thank you, and I do hope you enjoy the conversation. Samantha, welcome. Hi. Welcome. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good, good, good. This is did exciting. You do any work, did you do any work today? Did you do any, do any artwork? Yeah, I did. I I try to do some every day. Like You do some every day? Yes, I do. I, I basically do at this point. So what did you do today? Like, what kind of work did you do? Well, I mean, I can show you. It's right here. You can, you can show me what you were working <laughs> this, on? This room is very small, and I can, like, basically touch everything. I think that's like <laughs> everyone, spot. a lot of studio, like our artist studios are much smaller than, uh, than we are portraying the world. Yeah. Or at least the things you're working on. Like if it's not within my eyesight or hand distance, like I forget it even exists. So it must be very close to me or it's, you got to keep, you got to keep it, you got to keep it close or else you're not going to work on it. Yeah. So I've, I mean, it's right here. I'm just working on these little things that look kind of like the things behind me. Um, and I mean, that's why I can kind of work every day is because I can pick it up and put it down for any reason at any time, which is really important since I've got kids and a life and that type of thing. So I've, I have found that my work l looks like my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, um... So I, I, I'm curious about this. We're just going to jump right into it. We're going to jump right into Let's, it. I'm, yes. I'm curious about how you, you navigate your day with, with kids um, and, and, and how do you make work with kids? Because like um, a lot of artists I know, you know, they're most of them, not, not most of them, but a handful, I think it's like 80, 20, you know, like 80, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, they don't, they don't have kids or they're not parents. So like uh, the, they're, access to time is much larger than you and I, right? Where, where they, they're, they're like this, this, they just like, they get this on whim. Like, I want to go in the studio and work. All right. Good. Bye. You know, how yeah. do you do that? Right. Right. Well, <laughs> I know it's kind of crazy. Like I actually think back at a time when I didn't have kids, which really wasn't that long ago, like five plus years ago. And it's not that I wait that time, but I'm just like, ah, if only I had known like how much free time I really had, um, maybe things would be different. But no, so I, I really didn't get back in to painting and doing the things that I'm doing until I was actually pregnant with my second. Um, and I think part of me knew like, all right, the end is near. I'm about to have the second kid. And, you know, I, I don't think you've ever been pregnant, but when you're pregnant, like you've got those crazy nesting hormones. And it was for me, like almost a way of nesting. Like I was compulsively wanting to just paint and experiment and, you know, do all the things. So, um, I got a ton of stuff done. And then last October I had my son, my second child and my older one is in preschool. Um, last year's like one o'clock. So when you have a baby, it just kind of lays there. You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't do a lot. So I was still able to get quite a bit done. Now it's a lot harder. Um, he's crawling, he's doing all kinds of stuff. I used to just like be able to shut the door. I actually have like a little space for him to play around. I've essentially baby proofed it. Like he's allowed to pick up Patrick, who's one, almost one. I let him pick up paints that are sealed. He can touch them. Like, that's part of my secret, I guess, is I let him kind of make a mess of my place. <laughs> um, but that's not appeasing him so much anymore. So I've, I actually, right now I work in 
if I can get like 45 minutes of solid art making time in, that is like super supreme for me. So I work in like 10, 20, 30 minute intervals, depending on what's going on. Um, which is why like my work kind of looks the way that, that it does. Like it's very, uh, you know, step based. I can pick it up, put it down. It's not like I'm trying to like, um, you know, fine tune any certain spots, the paint dries, I can paint over it. Um, it's a very forgiving process. So I guess really to answer your question is I just had to change my expectations of what it meant to be an artist and make art. Like it wasn't going to be this heady seven hours in my studio, like smoking cigarettes and listening to, <laughs> to like music and losing myself. It was going to have to be this in and out, in and out type of thing. Did you ever have those seven hour um, studio marathons and smoke cigarettes? <laughs> I mean, if there was like in college and I had a deadline and I never smoked cigarettes, I honestly tried. Like I wanted to be really cool and smoke cigarettes in college with all the cool like art kids, but it's, I just never caught on, which that was, is great. That, that worked was a, out well. That was a thing in college. Like that's still a thing probably for a lot of like college artists is that they're like, Oh, we got to have a smoke break and they'll, they'll go yeah. out and smoke. And you're like, um, I don't do any of that. What do I, do I just right. hang out with you? Or do I, just, do I, do I just stay back here and work on my own work? What do I do? Right. I don't know right. this social like construct that I'm supposed to be working in here. Is it, you know? Yeah. No, so you yeah. Never, I mean, so you did seven hour bouts. In, in, well, in college. if I had like a deadline, I, so I studied printmaking, which is also kind of like very um, step based, process based. Like uh -huh. you never really finished one thing in one go. It was always like one phase and then you gotta let it dry or you have to let it like sit and cure or whatever. Like there's a lot of things going on. Um, and, and honestly, I, I don't do much for seven hours. So like I, I was never really going to ever work that way. This suits me really well. <laughs> I get like very distracted. I get, I want to move on to something else. And so this is actually like perfect for me. But um, I do wish I could just like sit in this space and exist and do whatever I, whatever else I might need to do um, here, just be around it more. But I do yeah. have to like leave the room often and like be a mom and be a real person. So, yeah. Was, was printmaking your first like choice as far as a major or did you have another major uh, uh, that you were interested in? I, so I originally started with architecture. Cause I was like into art in high school was very, was good at art. It was like, okay, that's what I'm doing. But like, I can't be an artist because that's not real. <laughs> so like I'll do architecture and that is brutal. Very detail oriented, very, you know, like talk about like a cult. I mean, it's great. I did love it, but I just wasn't suited for it. Um, and then I had a high school teacher who was a printmaker, um, high school art teacher. And then I took a like drawing class in college to get into the art program. I, I don't really remember what I thought I was going to do, but like my drawing TA was super cute. And so I was like, all right, whatever he does is what I'm going to do. And it was printmaking. And then that's how it happened. And then I genuinely loved printmaking, but I just needed all these other little things to kind of like get me in that spot. Were you into art as a child? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. What like, were the things that you did? I mean, I just drew all the time. I used to, um, like, I remember looking at kids who were really good at drawing. Like, there was this kid in my second grade class, his name was Adrian Bell, and he drew a bunny. And, like, it was such a good bunny. And everyone was looking at him like, oh, my God, like, you're so good at art. Like, you're a real art, you know, we were very impressed with him. And I just remember thinking, like, I, lo I, like, I love that. Like, the thing you're good at is not, you know, necessarily loud or funny or like you're not the fastest kid in the class. It was just something like a little more meaningful to me. And then, um, yeah, I just, I've always loved color. I've always loved images. I don't know. Like that was just visual stuff was totally my thing. And I would also talk to myself a lot. Like I would walk around my backyard and like make up these stories, uh, 
so I think I've always just had this like creative, constantly moving brain. And once I meshed that with my interest in drawing and coloring and painting, then yeah. I've also had really incredible art teachers like every step of the way. Were the were your art teachers like a, a um, major influence uh, for you as a uh, kid and teenager and high schooler, college? Yes. 1000. Yeah. My elementary school teacher just, you know, you're a kid, you don't really quite understand the, the nuances of life, but you can tell like the difference between your art teacher and maybe like your social studies teacher. And I just remember being like, well, if I have to grow up and be someone like, I want to be like her cause she looks happy and she's different and she wore tank tops and I'm pretty sure she had a tattoo. Like that just seemed more my vibe than like tucking in my shirts and wearing belts. Like I, I never, wanted to do that. <laughs> and then um, in high school, I had a, a teacher who I'm still actually super close with. Like I talked to her constantly. Um, and she and I just really hit it off. She was a major influence on me. Did they influence your work at all? Did they direct you in a, in a, in a pathway that you would never imagine? Um, what would I say to that? They just helped me see that the way that I was thinking and the way that I saw the world, there was a place for that to be really valid, which was in the classroom making art. So I, I guess I've always just considered an art class to be like a safe space. You know, I, I think I was a smart person. I think I am a smart person, but I was not very good at school. Um, and so when I was like in math or in, you know, like an English class, I, I just had this anticipation that like I wasn't going to live up my potential. And I knew that. But with art, I really wanted to push my skills. I wanted to do better. I, I wanted to explore on my own. I had this like intrinsic motivation to just to, to do art and to ex expand on what I was capable of doing. Do you think, um, what, what, what motivates you like, in, like deep down? Like, is there a... Um... I always I find it funny when I when it's something about motivation and like or inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. You you have like I'll have conversations with with other people and and so, some artists were like they're highly motivated and they just love what they do and then there's other artists that it they'll talk about art as if like it could be a job and sometimes there's like these these moments where like they're not motivated to do it you know like especially yeah. if you're doing it every day there's these there's these like there's there's like bouts of like, like uh, I want I don't want to say my like melancholy, but like you're you're just like oh now I gotta I gotta go draw again, you know, <laughs> like because like yeah. if you're doing it every day, there is there is some like habit that it's established, but also there is some labor in, involved, and there is times where when you're working, it's labor and it's it's work. Mm -hmm. um, what is a, a motivating factor for you with your, with your artwork? Um, I think there's a ton. I, the thing that motivates me to do it every day is you're a parent. So you know what happens when you have kids, there is this sort of loss of identity temporarily. And you know that if you don't have that, if you don't have something besides just being a mom or, you know, a dad, like there's nothing left over. I mean, it's, you could easily fill that with something fairly toxic. Like you could drink a lot. You could um, just kind of like tune out and stop using your brain. You could, I, you know, like I do think we would try to fill that with something that wasn't very meaningful. And so art has been that thing that it's almost like uh, my husband, who's also, he's a writer and he talks about writing as it's like exercise. Like if he doesn't do it one day, he feels, he feels it. Like there was something that, that energy that he has inside him didn't come out. And I'm, I understand that to be true now. Like I've gotten to a point where like, yeah, if I don't do just a little bit every day, if I like don't touch that thing that I'm working on, then I, I can tell that it's like, where was I that day? Like, I don't think I woke up. <laughs> so I guess what motivates me is just I, I want to keep up the habit. I want to keep going. I want to 
you know, it might just look like a bunch of colorful squares, but the headspace that I get into when I start painting them in and choosing colors is, is a great spot. What kind of, like, what, how long does it take you to get into the headspace? You said you only, you, you work at like 20 minute to 40 minute, uh, like uh, increments. Yeah. Is, it, is it really quick? It's pretty instant. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. I mean, because again, like I, I love what I'm doing and it's, it's to me far more than like what you see, which I'm sure you understand that as an artist too. Like there's, there's way more to this than, um, than there what's there. Uh, so I, yeah, like it, yeah. Have you missed any days so far? Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, and it's not, it's not a compulsion. Like if there's something going on and I don't get in there, it's fine. Like actually all summer I have a job, a real job, um, where I am the camp director at my son's school. And that's actually like how we get a tuition discount. Like it's really important that I have that. Um, it's to me, it's part of making art and cultivating, like, I guess what we would call an art business is like, I need that part of the summer where I can take a step back and like give myself permission to just let it all exist and I don't have to deal with it. So I actively don't make any art in the summer. I also hate summer. So like, uh, I don't know, I'm just like generally kind of grumpy about doing things because I'm just like sweating all the time. So you don't like sweating because because it's summer? Yeah, because it's gross. And I have bangs and sweating with bangs <laughs> is like truly worse. So I would actually rather just, be just, at work. <laughs> it's just yeah. trenching on your face. Like, oh, why is it so hot? It's summer. I yes. just wanted to go to go away. So uh, you, you don't, you, is this a, a thing you do every year where you don't uh, work for like three months? You don't make work or is yeah, it like, like two a half, two months or. No, it's like all summer. Um, so yeah, about two months. So you have to remember, I went over a decade after college, um, not really making artwork. Like I did, I thought that that part of my life was over or not for me. Um, I did get my master's in art education. So I had this thought that I would be an art teacher and yeah. I just got like totally distracted by life. And I had a great time. A lot of awesome things happened, but um, I wasn't making art. So I think coming back to it as someone in their mid thirties, um, there's like a level of maturity and not making up for lost time, but just, you know, I, I have a better sense of myself. So I, uh, I do take it pretty like seriously. I, I do. Uh, I feel like you talked about, um, you talked about how like um, you're more consistent making artwork now than in the past. And you talked about how, like you, you said that you kind of squandered. It's not squandered, but like definitely not as efficient with your time. I, I no. feel like that as well. Like now that I, that I have a kid, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I got to be more hyper-focused because now every like kernel of time, kernel of minute, like every little minute is very pre precious. Pre yes. Yes. Precious. What was it like? What was <laughs> yeah. it like a, a, a Schmeagol? Was it Schmeagol? Is it Schmeagol from, uh, what's that <laughs> character from uh, uh, Lord of the Rings where he's like, my precious. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know what his name is. Uh, um, but um, yeah, every minute is very precious. And um I do mm -hmm. get what you're saying where like if you miss a day, you feel like um, something's been taken out of your soul for a second. You know, like you feel bad. Yeah. Like I I do get it's that. like maybe what if like this is the new pattern? Like what if missing a day means which is which is a very unhealthy way of thinking, but there is like that part of you that's like, Well, what if I just start missing more days and then it's just gone? But Well, yeah, that that's another thing of a fear that can occur is like you because if you miss that day, you're like, you might think, well, you might feel a little bit bad, but you also like, ah, oh, I kind of enjoyed this, this act of doing nothing. This is mm -hmm. kind of nice. Maybe yeah. if I do it the next day, will right. I feel, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I um, the, the idea of just kind of being consistent is very appealing to me. And also I, I, I feel that uh, uh, when you do that, you, if you stop, I liken it to like a, a snowball. Like if you, if you, if you, if the snowball hits a tree, you got to build up that, that momentum and it might take yes. uh, a while to get back, to get back to, to level one or whatever 
area mm-hmm. that you're in with your work, you know? So it's, I always find that very intriguing. Um, so um, you talked about 20 to 40 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. What's, what's the day like for you on average leading up to that? Like, are you, how do you schedule your day in order to get to the studio? Yeah. Um, so luckily my studio is at home. Like that would be the dream to have it not be at home, but also that would be highly inconvenient right now. Um, so it's mostly it's, it's has to do with the nap time. So my older son is in preschool all day, which is like, ah, so amazing. Um, and I'm just home with Patrick, my younger one. And so he still naps twice a day, but almost inevitably, like I put him down and I do something for, I don't know, like I dick around for 20 minutes. Then I finally get in here and it's almost like as soon as I get into a really good spot, like maybe that 30 minute mark has passed. It's like, I can hear him. Um, so more so than with my first, I'm or with Augie, my older one, I'm trying to like really get this like nap thing down packed because it's really, I totally rely on it as my time to do things. And I, you know, I've, um, sometimes I'll move stuff into the dining room and work there while he like crawls around. But even that's getting like just so much harder to do. And if I leave something unattended, like inevitably he's, I know he's just going to like knock it over one day. Um, so I'm trying to avoid situations where I resent that I'm balancing motherhood and being an artist. Um, I try really hard not to resent it because truly like one of the big reasons I'm even doing all of this is because of having kids and wanting them to see like me do something I love and pay attention to and like have a hobby and have a life. So uh, anyway, yeah. So structuring my day naps, um, you know, I try to do like grocery pickup. I know these things sound like so stupid, but really they're a huge part of like how I make this all work. How I think a lot of moms and dads who are uh, artists at home make it all work. So it is. It is very challenging. Like I, I, I understand that. That oh gosh, that hits me. Hits me hard. Hits me hard. Like the 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 feeling of resentment a little bit. You're like yeah. You're like oh, you just get started and then right. you 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 have momentum going and you have to stop and then you have mm-hmm. momentum going you have to stop and there's science behind this where like. If you're distracted, you know, there's a, 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 a like, um, a grace period before you, you actually get back into that, that moment. Like yeah. it could be, you stop, it could be five minutes, but if you stop three times, you've lost 15 minutes and out of your, uh, however, however long of a lot of time that you have, mm-hmm. it adds up, you know, and it maybe does. it's not five minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, you know, maybe you're like, yeah. you're, I, I always under I, I get this feeling like of, of being like my mind's always somewhere else when I'm working, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and that can happen so so frequently. But I do know. Um, do you feel that ever since being a parent, uh, that your patience has has like like just quadrupled in 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 like scale? I feel like that's happened. Where like even though I, I always thought that I had pretty much extreme like really good patience because i was always working on artwork that took long a long time to do but mm-hmm. now i feel that that's that's it's even higher than before because mm-hmm. i have to kind of work around um schedule around uh, another human being essentially yeah and that that's that's very interesting to me do you feel that that that's something that you've acquired or you've inquired like a higher degree of patience? Um, I use every patience dollar I have in me pretty much on my kids. I feel like I am more impatient and more intolerant of like bullshit in every other department though. So like, um, which can be good because then you can filter out the stuff in your life that you really just don't need. Or, or, you know, there were things that you know are not great for you. But then it could also be like, I'm yelling at my dog 55 times a day because like, I can't have you doing your things if my kids are doing their things. Um, So yeah, in a way my patience has grown. Um, I would say I'm actually extremely patient with my children, but with 
other things I, I think I do need to work on some of my patient. Well, whenever you, uh, uh, I think that like you're, you're building up your patients, like patients stamina, you're like your mm -hmm. ability to kind of like just, uh, ratchet up your, uh, your, um, the t amount of time that you can kind of, uh, take some of these things that are time consuming, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, it's very fascinating that, 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 that's, that you've been able to, uh, build up that level because it's something that no one, none of us, I've never thought about it until I had a kid and I've had to acquire a higher level of patience because of just, just the uh, curveballs left and right, you know, yeah. like you just start doing something and all of a sudden, like, <laughs> I got to go yeah. potty. All right. I got to go. Oh, <laughs> or right. Like, and it's not like they're like, my arm is bleeding. They're yeah. like, <laughs> they're like, ah! you know, like I, I can't find this Lego and there's a billion Legos. Like surely you're get, uh, Yeah. So, um, yeah, the things that you have to be patient for are pretty hysterical. And I think if you can like really, I, I think what actually I've learned to do is super quickly in a moment is take a step back and kind of think about things with the big picture. So like, yes, this request that you've just come in for to me is crazy and so annoying and something you can absolutely handle by yourself. But, you know, our kids are young. They don't know. They don't know things. And we can't expect them to know all the things. And like, that's really our job is to show them like, you know, that grace and that patience and that understanding. Um, and, you know, I, I do, especially as my older one is getting older, I've like set up some boundaries <laughs> with them. Like, Hey, like I am not available to do that right now. So you may talk to me in a little bit or like, please go find something else to do. Um, yeah. It's, it's good to be able to, to be able to like separate yourself emotionally from um, some of the, 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 the some of the demands as well, because, you know, yeah. it, as, as frustrating as it can be, sometimes you you want to kind of like kind of try to build up like a, an immunity, like a, a like a subconscious barrier. Like, OK, we, we can we can jump back to the project that you had at hand. I know it's yeah. inconvenient, um, but, you know, you, you you always have there's always another like there's always some time a little bit in the evening or a little bit later. Um, you just got to push it um push it forward, bump it up to another time slot, you know? Yeah. Do you have, do you actually have, speaking of time slots, do you actually like block out time in your day? Um, I, mm, I don't really, I'm a, I'm a terrible scheduler. Like I don't have a planner. I don't have a, like, I fall into habits that are fairly predictable, but okay. um, I'm not one of those people that's like, all right, well today I'm going to do two hours of work on my website and, this afternoon, I'm going to call these people, you know, like I, if I put that expectation on myself and then I don't hit it, like, uh, that's just too much for me. So I've learned with myself that like, I work much more day to day. I don't set high expect, well, I don't set very specific expectations. Um, the one thing I don't do is I rarely work once the kids go to bed. So I am not that night owl artist. I wish I was because that is the best time. But um, my brain just totally shuts off. I actually work pretty well, no, like trying to manage all the things. Um, like I've, I've really perfected that process for me. Um, yeah. So it's not really scheduled. So you mentioned, um, well, well, when you mentioned this, where you mentioned that you, um, you uh, you you have very strong like habits, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that and that that in essence is actually kind of like a schedule, right? Where you've kind of built up this yeah. these habits throughout. Um, yeah. What are some of those like consistent habits that you do each day that uh, uh that you've kind of streamlined your uh your uh, basically daily schedule? Yeah. So I drop my younger at school. I get home with the baby and like try real hard to keep him awake in the car. Um, put him down. So let's say it's like nine o'clock, like nine o'clock. I'm usually either like in here getting going or I'm doing something on my computer. Cause I also am trying to like sell the work and get it out there and look at other opportunities and that type of thing. Um, so one of those things, but I, in general, I like to start my like 
productive day with just getting in here and doing something. Um, and then I usually kind of like wait till he wakes up. So let's say I get, let's say I have an hour of time, but there's certainly not like an hour of art making. It's maybe like a half hour. Cause also like there are other things that have to be done in my house, much to my chagrin. And then, uh, he gets up and I kind of just like, I, I don't even know what happens. Like I putz around, I get certain things done. Um, maybe I make phone calls, maybe we run, run an errand. Um, I try to keep going though. I try to stay like on my feet, staying active. Um, I think it's easy for me at least to like sit down and like Patrick's playing just fine. And like, maybe I get on my phone and start scrolling. And then that, comp that is the thing above all else, like over my kids, like if I get on my phone and start scrolling, I lose all brain power and motivation to do anything. It just like evaporates. The day is gone. The day is gone. Or <laughs> it's just like very derailed. And I feel like I feel this nasty fog, you know? So, um, I mean, it happens though, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then, uh, around noon, um, he goes back down and that's usually like the good nap, as I say. And, uh, that's where I can really like pump out some good stuff. And like, I do, I work with glitter, which we can talk about at length. And lately I've been putting resin on, like, that's why this is all shiny, um, which I love. And it's great because like resin is one of those things where you just got to mix it up and pour it on, level it, let it go. And you can't touch it for 24 hours. So it's like, I'm off the hook on that one. You know what I mean? So it feels like you're getting this like massive step done, but it's actually not that. And so to have that feeling of completion or that feeling of like finishing, like checking that box is really, really nice. And usually I, it inspires me to kind of move on to something else. What's up? What's it like? How do you start your work? Like what's a, what's the process you were talking about how you have a, a set process yeah. is there is what is the, the process from beginning from like concept like on paper if you do any sketch work to mm -hmm. end like what do you what are the steps um more so it with this body of work that i've been working on and with probably any body of work that i would ever say that i've worked on it starts with just like thinking about colors and shapes and it's like i don't even have a crystal clear vision of what that might look like on the canvas but it's very important that i just start going like i just gotta start throwing stuff on there you can always cover it up um and this is how it was with printmaking too which is so crazy because it's so technical and time consuming like you would hate to go in there with no real plan um but i did so and then i would kind of cover it up and see like what shapes would form and really play around with, um, you know, not like happy accidents, but just things start to develop. Things start to become really clear. And then it's, it's almost like I get really obsessed with it. So like these um, grid series that I've been working on, I mean, it is downright obsessive. It feels like something like there's a maximum amount that I have to just pump, pump out. Like having one of those doesn't suffice. I need to have a whole wall of a bunch of them. Um, so generally whenever I do, it might on its own be like kind of this simple concept, but as I make each other one, new things are revealed to me. Like, okay, I, I can, my hand is getting steadier my color choices are getting more sophisticated. I'm tightening it up. I'm coming up with a new way of priming my canvas. Like it's, it's this kind of by doing multiples all the time and repeating the process. Like it's like I have these matrix and I can see myself actually growing within that concept. So why, why the grid series? What started that? Um, I think, I think because I was, having the situation I was in, which was I had to put it down and pick it back up um, all the time. So I couldn't just paint and start to discover things and let the painting take over. I, I didn't have that type of time. I really had to kind of like know that I was getting into something that I could jump back into whenever I needed to. So with those, like I can 
just do one, like I'll just like, I've got like a sun, sunflower yellow. I'm gonna do all the sunflower yellow ones. I do it color by color. So um, like, I'll do that right now. And then I, I can check that off. And then I can do like hot pink the next one. And then today I'll do like all the, the light glitter first or whatever. Um, so I think that's where that came from. And lately with the grids, there are like, uh, not habits, but I have a tendency to like, for example, I have this tendency to keep them really small. And in my head, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, on this next one, I really want to have a variety of like sizes. And I want to have this big dramatic contrast between like larger boxes and like smaller little steps. And no matter how conscious I am of that, whenever I start to line it out and grid it out, it's like, I can't, it never actually happens. Like I'm thinking, make that one big. And I don't like, why don't I make it big? I, I can't, <laughs> I don't know if you, if that's relatable to anybody, but um, it's like, I'm actively trying to problem solve this and, and grow this. And sometimes it just doesn't happen. <laughs> and I just have to let it kind of play itself out. I don't know if that resonates with you, but have you taped off an area before just like, so it, it's, it's unavailable? No, I never tape anything. I actually was thinking there's one, there's a blank one on my wall. And I was thinking that I was going to take it really slow and my only focus be perfecting every edge, eliminating every brush stroke I possibly can, you know, um, that might be like the next level up for me. Because the other thing that I tend to do is I, uh, I tend to work very fast and I, it's very gratifying to me to get something done quickly mm -hmm. in art, in life, always been that way. Um, which is probably why I wasn't that great at school. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. So like I, if I can make myself kind of slow down and see what happens there. It's, it's very uncomfortable. I don't know if I like it, but I think it's worth trying out, exploring. So, so why don't you slow down? Is it, what, what, what's the, the friction there? I, it's like I can't. I mean, it's I can for a little bit, but then it's it's pretty, com I guess it's very compulsive. Like I like to work super fast. Um, but also like, I. so I guess when I have like a larger area to paint and I get that satisfaction of painting that whole thing and it's like, Oh, I just got all this done. But then I've got these little tiny ones and they're really important because once they're all finished together, it looks so amazing. But, um, I, I, I can't rush through those little guys. Like they take a lot of patience. Cause again, like I'm not taping it off. Everything's by hand. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't, know why I am the way I am sometimes, <laughs> but the rushing thing is real. Um, I just, I have always have been that way. It's always a challenge to kind of force myself to slow down. It's a super, I guess it's all, it's like a superpower and it's kind of a curse too. How many, how many, how long does it take for you to, uh, to finish a piece? Um, maybe 12 hours. The, the, it's very easy in the beginning. It's, I just throw colors down. I don't really have a plan. And then with the less options I have, the more um, strategic I have to be about placing colors. Like there are certain mm -hmm. things I don't do. Like I never put two colors next to each other. I try not to put two colors like diagonally from each other, although it happens. And when that happens, I have to actually like talk myself off the ledge that mm, it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's kind of like, I remember in high school, I would freak out about like wearing the same clothes in one week. And then one day I was like, no one is paying attention to the clothes you're wearing. So they're like, calm the fuck down. Uh. <laughs> so then I have that same conversation with myself and I'm like, okay, cool. We're good. Um, and I, I also, there's, I mean, I, I should actually maybe see how many different colors are in one thing. I, I don't know what that is, but there is a ton. And I try to do like very subtle variations of colors and see like, a light pink with like a very, a little bit lighter pink and see if it, and you can tell a difference to me. Um, so with, as the boxes close up, as the grids are filled in, I make, my choices are so much harder to make. Yeah. 
Um, and then once everything's painted, I have to like go back in and touch up all the edges and make sure everything's like super crisp and clean. I mean, the goal is like from far away, they all look good. Um, close up, you can start to see the imperfections and I'm trying to like reduce the imperfections as much as possible um, without the use of tape or, you know, that type of thing. Although in this next one, I think I am going to use tape and see if that's just what I got to do. Um, and then the glitter takes a long time because it's messy. So very messy. Like everyone in my family, I'm sure just loves that I throw glitter everywhere. Um, and then the resin, I like have to coat each, each individual glitter square with a thin coat of resin and let that sit for a day. Because if you just put resin over it, the glitter starts to spread. So you have to really like care oh, yeah. for it each time. Um, and then usually it's two coats of resin. Like I never pour enough on. I never, like that's something else that I do is I never make enough of anything. And I don't know why I just don't make more of something. Like, I don't know why I, I hold back so tightly. <laughs> it's like, I'm afraid of excess or something, which is really ridiculous. Cause I would say I'm a fairly excessive person, but. How do you, how do you put the, uh, the glitter on your, your squares? Um, well, I have paint brushes. Like I buy not the nicest paint brushes for glitter or for glue, but I buy like really sharp, good, um, edging brushes and I put glue on, um, okay. and then I, one color at a time and I do the darker colors first so that they don't get on the lighter colors if one hasn't dried all the way. Um, and then I just pour it on and I tap it and then I brush it off. Um, before I put resin on, I, I like brush it off with a, like a light brush and then I blow dry it and mm -hmm. get everything off that I can. Sometimes a computer duster is really good for that. Um, yeah, just glue. You do you put two layers on or just one? Sometimes two. Darker colors, sometimes two. Because glitter is actually, like, if you buy, um, this might be, this is so fascinating to me. But, like, if you buy black glitter, like, every single speck of that glitter is the same color. If you buy holographic black glitter, maybe it's, like, 30% or, like, a holographic type of glitter and 70% are black. Yeah. So when those start to settle depending on how like well it's mixed or whatever, then you might have like patchy stuff. The holographic yeah. stuff is, is tricky. Um, right now, like my biggest thing that I'm thinking about with my glitters are like, what holographic does it lean? So you might have like a yellow with a green leaning hologram. And if it's green leaning, it doesn't, might not look the way you want it to look, but that could be great for making green glitters. So it's just like these little things that I had never really thought about. Like when I first started, I just bought glitter. And then now I mix my own. I actually have like a huge container of like mixed glitters um, that I've mixed myself, uh, which is another reason why I have to put layers on because there's like a ton of colors in there. So you like take two colors, two colors of glitter and mix them together to like have like... Oh, like multiple colors. Yeah. Like I okay. basically mix glitter like you mix paint. So if like I rainbow like rainbow glitters? Kind of like, yeah. Like, so if I make an olive green, which is like to me, Olive greens, like any sort of like mossy green or brown camel color, those are the hardest ones to do because you in paint, right? Like as you're mixing up um, like an olive green, you add green, you add a little yellow, you add some red, maybe a little light pink, maybe some white. And if you do that with glitter, like you're, it's not the same way. So I, I'm still fine tuning how to do all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many things. And I think the key is uh, it's not going to look the same. And sometimes using clear based glitters rather than like a solid, just chopped up piece of like green um, plastic is mm -hmm. kind of the way to go. So I am like, you know, I guess within these, there's so much to explore that it's, it's always interesting doing another one. Because like I always learn something that I can then apply to the next one. So you're actually... Mixing the, the, the glitter so that it actually makes a new color. Yeah. Let me see if I... So like kind of like yeah. a, a pointillism where you, you mix those uh, like little dots together, different colored dots, and then it makes a new color out of that? Yeah, basically. Let's see if I have easy access to it. Yeah. Here. Okay. So like I just keep them in these little containers. Okay. And then when I get really into it, I'll like stack 
the paint that I've made the glitter to like correspond with. And so then around my studio, I have like, this glitter goes with this color. So then I know that's the one we're doing. Um, so that it's consistent throughout. But I buy like, I just bought a ton of yellows. So like this is, these are all the different like yellow ones I have. All right. Isn't it cool? I mean, I have an, a ridiculous amount of glitter. How do you clean that up? Like, uh, uh, do you just have a, do you take it outside or is it, it, you actually work with the glitter inside? I usually work, so there's a really big one up here behind me, right up there that I did take outside. But even like the slightest bit of wind, like you might not even think it's windy. Oh, and then you yeah. go do glitter outside and it's very windy. Did not so even think you, about that. You kind of have to, um, like I even have a fan on in my room and I have to turn it off. It's like on the lowest setting. Um, I just do it inside. I don't mind it. Like to me, it's fine. My mom was that way. She used to like mail cards to people and put glitter in the cards. So when they would open it up, and it's like truly cruel. Like she would know people hated glitter and just do it anyway. Um, so I, that luckily, was a service. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like this life's too short. Like people are just so hung up on things. Glitter's fine. Nope. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I try really hard to keep it tidy and I've gotten much better. Like I, I would say if you walked in here, you would notice that there's glitter on the floor, but like you would be expecting so much more. That was a uh, there was a uh, a couple years ago there was a uh, like uh, a prank service where mm -hmm. where people would uh, this company would would fill an envelope with glitter and yeah. and mail it to people for you as a, as um, a prank. I've gotten one of those before. <laughs> <laughs> like even before I got back into making art, like I've always loved glitter, and my friends all know this about me. And someone sent me one, and I'm like, "What? Like this is fine. This is nothing. This is nothing. You did not prank me." Like, thank you. Do it again. <laughs> I'm gonna use this glitter for my own artwork. Uh, right, exactly. You just saved me twelve dollars. We actually, when I was like, I don't know, twenty five, I lived in this apartment with a bunch of people, and uh, one Halloween we all made our costumes, and I was a peacock, and I made this huge peacock costume with glitter everywhere, and we fully lost. So this was in, I lived in Aspen, Colorado. So we paid a buttload of money to live in this apartment and we lost our entire deposit because they were like, there is glitter everywhere. Like we have to get like a professional in to get into the cracks and crevices. It's in our couch. And we were like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> it, um, yeah. It does not go away. It doesn't go away. <laughs> no, like you have to be, you have it's to there. accept that that's sticking around. That's it's right. there forever. <laughs> that's right. Besides, um, Besides glitter, what other like interesting techniques or little tricks that you are you that you're doing with your your work right now? Um, oh, what else am I doing? Well, I, let me let's wrap up the glitter conversation because I do want to make sure I wrap it I, up. Wrap it up. I noticed. Oh, wrap it up. I, was, I think you said wrap yeah, it up. When when I was pulling out those like packets of glitter, so like generally speaking, I feel like people who work with glitter are crafters. And they make like, you know, I'm sure you've seen like those resin is very popular, making like resin everything, yeah. um, tumblers, I don't know, like people put glitter on all kinds of shit. And I think that there's like this stigma in the fine art world where that glitter is not allowed, right? Like glitter is not worth your time. It's disgusting. It's cheap, whatever. And I've just always been the kind of person that like when I hear things like that, like this notion that something has always been this way. And so that's what we're going to that's what we're going to roll with. I'm like, oh, it sounds like we really actually need to explore that a little bit more and maybe uh, and and change that. So like I'm, I'm really kind of on a personal mission to elevate the use of glitter in like a thoughtful, really intentional way. And I know that sounds like a lot, but like I'm super serious. Like I think that there's, I went to um, Crystal Bridges in Bentonville, Arkansas. Have you been there before? No. Okay. So do you know what Bentonville is? It's like the Walmart headquarters. No clue, but not now. Okay. okay. It's just right outside of Fayetteville, Arkansas. And Bentonville is this town where there's like um, Walmart execs. There's a ton of money in this town. And Alice Walton, who is one of the Waltons, um, started this incredible museum. It's totally free to the public. It's a lot of her work. And then she's like 
purchase work that you can share. And I saw for the first time ever this painting that had glitter on it, like yeah. in a museum. And I wanted to touch it so bad because they did. I, I like I have no idea how it was stuck on there. I have to like investigate that. But I'm like, all right, see, like there is we can make this a, a high form of art. With, with um, uh, uh, was it an oil painting? It was like this, it was on a panel and it was this sort of like Poseidon looking, um, like, I, I mean, I read the thing about it. It was like this gay man and he was Poseidon coming out of the ocean and he had like all these piercing. I mean, he was very like this fabulous guy. And then in the ocean was this, very strategically placed glitter. I mean, you couldn't miss it. So it was like very gratifying to see that. Cause I'm like, I like, I'm onto something here. Like, I know this is real. Um, yeah. I really do think though, like, uh, um, glitter is kind of becoming more, I hate saying this, but like, it's, it's, it's getting some, it. some acceptance in the, in the, in the art world, you know? And, uh, yeah. And, and you're right about the, the, like the, the idea of like, Oh, glitter is this, you, you put it on like, you know, craft pieces, you know, you get some Elmer's glue and you, you, you doodle something, you throw some glitter on there, you, you lift it up and the Elmer, Elmer's glue took all the glitter and it's all like a little thing. Right. Or you put that on like a, or you're, uh, you're in kindergarten or something. We're going to direct, uh, we're going to decorate your, your lunch bags for the day. And you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, or something like that. And then, and then we're going to put some, like some fall leaves on there. We're going to have some fun. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. super crafty and like, it's the aesthetic, like <laughs> like a seven-year-old kid put throwing glitter on something. That's like, you guys, this is fancy. This is really nice. This is really cool. <laughs> it's like- Sparkly, yeah. <laughs> right, it's sparkly. I mean, that's the thing is like, it's, su it's super superficial. Like on its own, doing absolutely nothing, it totally draws your attention. Yeah. So you don't have to work very hard to get people to notice what you're doing when you're using glitter. It's yeah. kind of cheap. But I think if you use it in a way where like it does make you it it does make you lean into the painting more and more and more, then it's I don't know, it's it's doing more than you thought it could do. Um, it's it's also like what what people don't understand, if you're doing it in like a, a fine art like fashion, it's very hard to control. Yeah. You know, yes. like to 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 keep it in in the area that you want it to be mm -hmm. you know it it doesn't want to do that it's it, it no. doesn't want to stay in the place that you want it to stay like, i I, I know from some from like my small experience in working with glitter i know it's not the most manageable of of a media to work with you know totally and there that is I've never really thought about that before, but there is a part of me that like always likes to do the hardest thing, even if it's like the littlest, hardest thing, which is probably like why I don't really bake because I, I think I would get obsessed about it and I would want to like make every single thing from scratch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, that's prop, there's probably something in me that recognizes that. And it's very sad. Like I just did a recent resin pour and like, there is no glitter anywhere. Like it is so tight. It's awesome. And it looks, it looks so much better. And you probably wouldn't even notice that. But to me, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm getting better. Do you, uh, um, do you have any like marketing strategies, strategies that you are, uh, that you know that are working for you? Oh, what works for me? Um, I mean, there's some classic stuff like uh, I know that whenever I send anything out on a newsletter on my website. So I also have a, a blog. I call them stories where I talk to other mother artists, kind of like honestly, like very similar to what we're doing here, but it's in written form. And I just like they just talk about their life. Like, how do you make this all work? What do you prioritize? You know, at one point, did you say like, it's really important to me that I'm an artist as well as a mom and I give them all of my attention. So um, like whenever I send one of those out, I can see like an uptick in like interest on my website and interest on my Instagram, which honestly Instagram is like the way that I've gotten myself out there. Um, I'm also a little old school ish and that 
I like to just like call and reach out to as many people as possible. Um, like when I started all this painting stuff again, it didn't take long for me to realize like, oh, I, I would really like to connect with other people. Like I can't do this on an island. Like I'm very extroverted sometimes. And um, I feel like there's a lot of uh, richness in doing things with other people and kind of bouncing ideas off of you. So I don't know if that's like particularly marketing, but in a way it is because I'm putting myself out there and meeting people who know people and getting ideas and following through on those ideas. Um, so yeah. And Instagram is pretty much the biggest way that I do things right now. So you're cold that's calling people. Um, yeah. Or like cold emailing people, I guess calling, it would be honestly my preference, but it's sometimes hard to just like get a phone number <laughs> for someone, but like just interior designers, for example, like I'm really into contacting those people. Oop, did I get, am I on there? I'm frozen. You're on there. You're Great. just lagging. Okay. Um, yeah, that, um, I've, yeah, I, I just reach out to anybody who either could help me promote art, get my stuff into a place where I want it to be, which I don't think or know if that's really a gallery. I don't think I want to go down that road. I don't think I'm interested in that road. I think that road is cracking a little bit. Um, so, um, yeah. So um, what, what do you, when you're looking for um, designers, are you going through Instagram or are you going through LinkedIn? Or are you like Googling it or, or what, what are you doing? And when you do these uh, cold emails? <laughs> um, some of it, it usually stems from knowing someone that has used that designer. So in a past life, I used to babysit a lot in Aspen where I lived and in St. Louis um, and I got connected to some people that have a lot of um, connections to, I mean, to be super frank, they've got a lot of money and they buy art and they hire really great designers to do their homes. And I have these awesome relationships with these people and I can talk super candidly with them about like, what is it like for you as like this, you know, woman with a lot of resources? Like, how do you buy art? Are you listening to the designer? Do you have your own preferences? Like, how does that work for you? Um and then I can be like, there's, that's a connection to maybe one designer. And then I just kind of send this blanket email out to others as well. How do they usually buy art? Um, it kind of depends on how good they consider themselves at purchasing art. So like, I just talked to some woman that um, recently redid a house and I'm doing a commission for it actually. And she pretty much just goes with what her uh, designer tells her to do. You know, like there's a oh, really? little bit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which like, can you even imagine? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but yeah, so her designer was like, you need to put in two like five by seven a diptych right here. She has like this gallery wall. You're going to do this diptych right here and it's going to go, you know, horizontal or vertical facing and your frames are going to look this way. And I don't want you to use these colors. And so she basically gives me that information and I go from there. Um. And then some like have been collecting art. Like that's actually like a hobby of theirs. They have a little bit more like sense of personal style. Not that this woman doesn't, but she's very trusting of the person who's doing her home. Um, so yeah, it just totally varies. I, what, the people I've talked to, some have collectors, are, are collectors of artists that they are super committed to and they will always buy their work. But a lot of them are just looking for like, you know, like one had a Frida Kahlo on her wall or not an actual, it was like a painting of Frida Kahlo. And she wanted mm -hmm. just a similar painting of like a different woman, <laughs> like something super generic. And her designer found her an artist and commissioned it. And like that could have been anybody. So there's a lot of opportunity out there. I think I guess one of my marketing strategies is to get like really creative with the opportunities that I know exist. Oh, wow. Wow. So tell me more about this. Uh, your Oh, one one second. Are you fro? Can you see yourself in the screen frozen? Yep, I'm still frozen. <laughs> Are you? I mean, am I frozen I, on you too? Because it's a look. Yeah, you're just like. I, uh -huh. I wonder, like, how how can how I? How do uh, we fix that? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I'm. You're. In, there we go. Uh, yeah. uh One second. 
cam and then turn it back on. Maybe you maybe you could uh, turn your camera off and turn it back on. Yeah. Yeah, try that. See that. Okay. Nope. <laughs> What's happening? Do I have I have great service? I have no clue. I think it's I think it's funny. Um but we can't do anything about it. I have no control over that. Um Let's try it again. Can I like reload the page? Maybe what, you can go to camera mic se settings and then check your camera settings. You know? Um, oh yeah. Maybe that might work. I don't know. I don't I have no clue. Maybe it could be something with with your computer or my computer. I don't know. Uh, okay. I, I thought that was I what well, well, it is what it is. We can't do, do anything about it although you're just going to be frozen in time until uh, the internet decides to catch up with the frame rate, I guess. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what's happening. I will I will leave a note uh, at the end of this uh, exclaiming uh, the stream yard that this occurred, uh, which is kind of funny. Should I reload the page? Would that mess me up? Um, you might be able to, to, uh, to jump in, uh, like leave and jump back in. I don't know if I'd want to do that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's go. I'm going to reload. I'm just going to, you're going to reload. Okay. Well, while, um, uh, while Samantha is, there we go. Yeah, I'm in now, the you're, now you're blank. Now I'm blank. What's going oh, on? Yeah. That's so silly. Did you did you turn off your your uh, video settings accidentally? I don't think I haven't touched my computer. Let's look. Why did that happen? I mean, I noticed I, it went frozen. Which yeah, is it went frozen. It went frozen. Um, mm. well, well, um, we're just going to have a blank screen until something happens. Maybe you can uh, okay. mess around here. Your mic is working mm -hmm. and everything else is working. Just like your, your camera decided to, uh, what is, I mean, it's very much on, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyways, uh, <laughs> well, uh, that's that's what happens often. Not doesn't happen often. This is the, probably the first time. Um, so, Samantha, I wanted I wanted to ask about your your thoughts on 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 galleries. Like you you were you were saying that they're kind of cracking. Like, what's your thought on that? So, uh, there's a little bit of a delay. I'm wondering if I need to move. Let me just move. Just move. Let's just move. Let's see what happens. Okay. We're gonna you can get a tour of my house. Let's just see if that helps. Oh, there's my dog. Is this helping? I guess not. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a fun to talk. I can't see you. I can't. Uh, well, we're just gonna continue talking, anyways. Do you have an avatar? Maybe we could put like a, a photo, or a... anyways, um, Samantha, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, you talked about your a little bit about galleries. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on galleries right now? Uh, my thoughts on galleries are, so I actually, I, I worked at a gallery when I was like 24, 25 in grad school. And um, hold on, there's a tremendous delay and it's really tripping me up. Are you getting some reverb from your audio? Yeah. Any suggestions? Can um, I Go to audio and see if echo cancellation is on. Yeah, it's on. Uh, so yeah. am I, am I, when I talk, are you getting some reverb? Or is it's it like, when you talk? Yeah, I think we're like 
four seconds behind. I'm like four oh. seconds behind you. That's interesting. That's interesting. How did this all just happen? We were doing so good. We were doing so good. Um, I would try try re backing out and re-entering again. You know, see okay, let's that do it. Technical difficulties. I, I know this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, we've had it. We've had it happen many times before. Um, sometimes the the artist has never been able to get back on, or didn't know how to get back on. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things about one of the, like one of the. It's one of those things you have to deal with when you're doing a a live stream and you're. Uh, you're like low budget, you know, and you have to uh, kind of navigate through some of these trial and errors. And that's why uh, every time I do these live streams, there's always a tech check involved. And so I'm always doing a tech check involved to, to make sure that there is connection and make sure that we don't have these hiccups, but there's no sure way to kind of mitigate or, or, or stop it from happening. Samantha, you're here. I'm here. No, I'm here though. No, no, no uh, visual though. Yeah, can you hear me though? The delay is gone. I, think. I, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. No visual. I don't know what's happening. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, um, so talk okay, about so your, gallery. your uh, gallery experience. Well, this is this is like my very. I don't actually know that much about it, and maybe that's helpful. So I did work at a gallery in my 20s. It was like this uh, a gallery in St. Louis that. I don't know. It was cool. It was fine. I thought it, I, I shouldn't say which one. Let me just say that I feel like I worked for this sort of toad of a human, just real stuck in the past. I don't know, like just not a lot of, it was very stuffy and uh, it just didn't really feel like my thing mm -hmm. at all. Um, it was just too formal. And then now, like, so another reason why I kind of started mother art and felt like I, I felt like there needed to be a place for real artists, not like someone like a real fine artist to have their work who they didn't necessarily have the resources, the time, the energy to go out and try to like get representation in a gallery. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? Like bring all my kids around. And then like, what if we all get COVID? Like it, like by that, I mean, if my son's classroom shuts down, like I'm shut down for two weeks, yeah. as you know. So I was like, there's got to be another way. But I also didn't feel like Etsy for a lot of reasons was really my jam. So I built my website. Um, and I think in general, the masses don't buy art because galleries are unapproachable. They're super inaccessible. I mean, literally, like, sometimes it's just hard to park at one. Yeah. Um, and you walk in, and it's, like, so cold, so snobby. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Like, I even feel super qualified to walk into any gallery and appreciate it and understand what's happening there. But, like, do I want to do that all the time? Like, no. Um. So there's got to be an alternative that's just as valid and still really respectable. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really kind of my thought on galleries. And everyone, like I, I have some friends who are represented in galleries and there is just this, I don't know. No one's ever like, I love it. It's the best. It's so great. Everything about it is amazing. You know, like there's always like something not, like they have a little thing to complain about and maybe I'm totally off base, but that's been my experience. And, um, I don't know. I think art should be consumed by everybody, you know, yeah. not just those that have funds and time and the wherewithal to even walk into a gallery. For those that don't know this, uh, galleries, most galleries generally take 50% commission. Yes, that too. <laughs> so like, um, if you ever wonder why when you go to a gallery something cost two thousand dollars or or more or you know it's generally because the gallery will take half of that and yeah. um the artist does not like let's put, we put it in the contest let's put it in the context like um 
let's say the average artwork at a gallery is two thousand dollars or twenty five hundred two thousand dollars the artist will take a thousand mm-hmm. which yeah you think that's that's a pretty good chunk of change but some artists you know are spending 50 hours or 60 hours or 70 hours on one work mm-hmm. you know and some of them are using really uh high quality materials they might stretch their own canvas they might use linen they might use really expensive oil paints and that eats into the cost of the the that thousand dollars now let's say they take off a 200 take off 200 dollars on just materials now that person made 800 dollars for maybe 50 hours of, of labor you know mm-hmm. so like um so you think oh they're making two thousand dollars for their artwork no they're not really making as much as you think there are some of them some artists i know make minimum wage or less on yeah. on their work on a gallery piece i've heard of some artist who worked who sold a piece for 15 grand and he told me he probably made about 7.95 an hour or seven dollars and 95 cents an hour because it was a very big piece and it took him a long time right. to finish you know totally. and then the guy was like we're gonna take half of it and, and, and that's and there's some you know i, I guess it's earned because they got to pay for the uh, 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 pay for pay bills. But um, you know, uh, when, when uh, from my experience, um, it's a lot, it's a very arduous process to get into a gallery. Like you got to do all oh, right. this work. You, like there's a lot of labor involved just to get into one. And right. um, you know, the, the, the rejection rate is probably super high. I wouldn't even know like that. I don't even know. Right. I, I just, I stopped, I stopped submitting to galleries a long time ago. It was just like, like the yeah. ROI to me was like the art return on investment was like, uh, yeah. I don't know. No, it's a ter- it's terrible. And like, you just don't need another opportunity for someone to um, arbitrarily tell you like, you are not good enough to be in this gallery. Like, what are we even talking about? Like, we're talking about art. We're talking about things that like, <laughs> I mean, I, that's a, I guess a whole other conversation, like what is good, what is not good, what is good enough. But um, yeah, I mean, there just has to be another way. And then if they take that money too, like, so now your $15,000 piece, like that just jacks up the cost of art for other artists, like even like myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just not an authentic representation of what I think we should really be pricing art and what it's actually worth to people. So I don't think, and plus, like, if if we've learned anything in the past two years, like, brick and mortar anything is not reliable. Like, yeah. if you can really manage to get it um, going virtually, I mean, it is really great to see art in person. And I will say, especially, like, back to glitter, it's super hard to photograph mm-hmm. in a validating oh, it, way. It bounces everywhere. Oh, I mean, it's 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 crazy. So, yeah. um, so you do have to see it in person or video or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I just felt like, I just feel z- like oh, zero part of me really wants to get involved with a gallery. I would much rather just have it be my own thing. And maybe, you know, that's, I, I think that's just kind of how it should be for some people. And uh, yeah. Also, I feel like, uh, I, like I hear, I don't know, on the, on the DL that uh, the, the, the price for art is at that high level for, uh, because of some, uh, some shenanigans going on, you know, some, uh, not, not necessarily, what's it called? Like, uh, uh, legal shenanigans. Like I, oh. I, I, I've, I've heard like they, I've heard that they, they, it's like a front for like laundering money, which I don't even. Oh, it I, totally could be. Like, I don't even know that's like that, like that, that kind of makes sense. You know, you have these pieces that are like millions and millions of dollars, but there might be something to it, you know? Right. Um, because again, people are really not afraid of art, but they just, the art world to someone who is not an artist or a consumer of art, like is very strange. And like, I don't think that there's a lot of people paying attention to it, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. No, you're totally right about that. So um, t- talk about this, this mother art SDL thing, this mother yeah. art thing that you, you, you were talking about how you, uh, you started this blog and was that was that before or after your kids um that was while pregnant with my second okay so 
basically I got back into painting. I was making some work and I was like, well, what if I, like, I can never just do something. Like I have to really go with it and take it (laughs) to a big place. So I was like, well, how can I sell this? And at the time I wasn't comfortable, I guess, like just throwing it up on social media. Like I was still pretty insecure about like, Oh, I don't know if it's good enough. I've completely gotten over all those feelings. Um, And so in order to sort of like uh, hold my own hand through the process, I was like, well, if I get other people involved, like if I really move the focus to like other mother artists in this area, then I can like share my work and not feel like it's just this big spotlight on me, um, which is a very much a me thing to do. So, and I, and naturally I think I do like to just, I like to connect with people. I like to connect people. It just sort of all snowballed again into this thing. So then I started interviewing these women and realizing like, man, there's kind of back to what we were saying. There's just so many ways that you can go about being an artist. And if you're a mother, like motherhood is essentially at odds with the fine art world. Like what am I supposed to do? Like bring my baby into a gallery and let him like run around and break things as I'm like talking to this gallery owner. Like that's just not the season of life I'm in. That's exactly what you should be doing is having yeah. run around. Well, I will say, I just went to this plastics Look the company. Painting. Right. I just went to this plastics company, uh, like manufacturer to get some, I want to make these like acrylic frames. And I like brought my baby with me. And like, I make it a point to never apologize for bringing my kids with me anywhere. Like they're part of the deal. Like I'm doing this this way because of them. And like, world we have kids let's stop pretending we don't and like they are welcome to come anywhere anyway so mother art so i start you know writing these stories sharing my art with the world or the world (laughs) with the masses and um i don't know to me i kind of liken it to like a little bit of a movement you know even if you're not an artist even if you're not a mom if you're someone who has like some pretty big responsibilities in your life like being a parent and you also have these hobbies and possibly passions that you want to nurture, but you feel like you can't because you've got a job or, you know, you're very, uh, I, this might be like, this might be a little too niche. I don't know if people will understand this, but especially with women, I think we, we think that our extracurricular, so the things we do outside of maybe like our job and raising children must be beneficial for us. Like, we better be exercising. We better be watching what we eat. We better be making dinner for our family. We better be keeping our house clean. Like everything should be in support of making your home life better. And I think that's totally ridiculous. Like we, if you have to make time for things that are just for yourself. Like it, I always say like my art, I mean, sometimes it puts food on the table, but it doesn't really bring in a lot of extra income brings in some um it's not like lowering my cholesterol it's not getting rid of my gray hairs I'm not like uh, you know it doesn't get my kids to school it's something that's really just for me um and so even if you're just like you know maybe you're taking care of a sick parent or maybe you have a really demanding job like uh, you just want to make sure you're finding time to do the thing that like when you're look back on your life like I'm so glad I I nurtured that talent that love that I have so that's really like the essence of it all um and that's what like the whole art making journey has been for me is just making sure to pay attention to that stuff and give it the time and attention that it needs um you know I went like like I said over a decade of not really doing that and I had fun but it wasn't super fulfilling it didn't really like you know I wanted so much more out of life so here we are so I'm hoping to like judge the shop. I would like to offer more things. I um I want it to be sort of a hybrid of like my fine art, but then also, you know, I've got I've got some ideas. I'm very just like my paintings. I'm very open to see where it goes. What what professional advice can you give to other artists or uh new artists? Um, gosh, I mean the hardest thing is to put your stuff out into the world and truly, truly, truly feel confident with 
what you've just decided to do. So like, you're going to get criticism, even if it's not in the form of like, I just don't like that. Like, you know, you paint apples. I don't like apples. Like that's, that's all really easy to manage. What's hard to manage is when people say things like, uh, you know, well, I mean, do you really have time for that? Or like what actually, when I brought my son to that plastics factory, my, my friend was like, she's like, Ooh, I'm pretty sure acrylics are, acrylic is really expensive. I don't know about that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know it's really expensive. Like I'm, I'm taking this seriously. Like I'm going in and doing this. So I, I guess just like trying to tune out all the people that might be trying, maybe they have your best interest in mind, but you know, just stay focused on the thing that you love doing and ha- try to build as much confidence around that choice as possible. There's always, um, no lack of criticism um oh my god from 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 other people right absolutely it 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 can uh it can be very very overwhelming you know because it's easy to kind of be the outside like critic looking in you know Mm -hmm. yeah like being that 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 negative person or trying to find trying to to force another individual to think in a, a um, uh, in a way that in, in a frame that y- you don't want to be in. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Like I never would ask someone, do you like this painting? <laughs> like that's the dumbest question in the world. I would never ask that of someone. Like I, I actually don't need to know if you like this or not. Plus like I, I have, a small group of people that I do talk to about like when it comes to like crits and stuff like that, I, that I value their opinion. But um, yeah, another thing for new artists is like, don't worry what people have to say about your actual art. That is so the least, that's the least of it. You know, there's like 8 billion people in the world. People are going, someone is going to like it. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned you're talking about uh, um, it's at the very beginning, you talked about TikTok and yeah. how you're like, TikTok people are, uh, the people in TikTok are like ferocious. No, it's like <laughs> next level. Like I grew up, I don't know how old you are. I grew up in social media. Like I got Facebook in college. So like I'm familiar with how that all works, but TikTok is like a whole other level. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and also like, it, it, it's like that on Twitter too. Like the, yes, the, there people just want to like bring you down yes. and, and, and like, it's it's often though like on from a like a, a like a psychoanalytical standpoint the people that are often people often the people that are like trying to bring someone else down are themselves not happy they're there oh, they no are question. generally not happy and so they want to bring you down to their level mm-hmm. and i know that sounds like a like a cliche thing but there is a lot of truth to it no, absolutely. You know. I mean, that's their their experience is misery. <laughs> so that's all they really understand and know. Like, why wouldn't they? They have a misery lens. There's no way that they wouldn't. Yeah, um, and, and they don't. They want. They don't want to see someone. Do yes. Doing something that that could better themselves, uh, either financially, personally, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, culturally. You know. Right. Yeah. And they just like it's something about it that that just it grinds their gears. I don't even know. Like there's like, I just don't, just don't like this person being happy. (laughs) Yes. I know. No, it's, it's really, it's human. I do think like, if I'm being real, there are times when I less so now I'm generally happier with my decisions in life. But like, I, I know what it feels like to look at someone doing well and be like, I hate that for you. Like I genuinely hate that for you. And that's because I'm so miserable in my life. The thought of someone being happy is more than I can stand. I'm so freaking jealous of you is what that is. <laughs> Super jelly. Yeah. Super yeah. jelly. I mean, that's like, you know, you're just jealous. That's, that's true. They are. <laughs> well, like uh, I, I was just listening to this, this, uh, uh, podcast or video i don't know what i i don't know how i stumbled upon it but like um Mm -hmm. um, uh, facebook instagram social media has made everyone 
uh, uh, like wealthy or, or, or live in their best life, mm-hmm. you know, like, like they're doing so well. Yeah. They're just know? so freaking happy. Their, 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 their banks, their bank account is, is this bulging, you know, and everything's perfect because it's, they don't want to show a kink in their armor. They don't want to show that the, it, things may not be going so good, you know. Right. Uh huh. And, and I'll, I often heard this. I never, I, I never would, I never would have thought of this. But like, this is a thing. This is what occurs on these platforms. Uh, yeah. Two things. Uh, well, uh, one thing is, um, they the these influencers will buy followers you can go to website oh you, can go to web, you can go to website and say like i want to find or, like buy instagram followers or like get more instagram followers i actually yeah. made a, i had a i made a blog post about that about like how uh, you don't want to be doing uh, fo- having buying your own instagram followers and yeah. it, it was i i hyperlinked to that the, the actual site that you can buy followers Oh no! And, and, then, and then later on, the they, the 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 owner, like uh, a rep or something, messaged me in an email saying, "You need to please take that down," because <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you could do it. You can you can you could buy followers. Another thing that they uh, these Instagram Instagram influencers do, or Twitter or Facebook, is they'll they'll make you think that they're like bank, they're balling, and they'll what they'll do is they'll withdraw the entire bank account you know uh-huh. where the, in, in cash and do like oh, photo do photo ops of them with like money yeah. you know like and how like, stupid oh, are they like <laughs> i'm doing so well then they're like like they check out how much money they have they, they, they took out all the like let's say they had five thousand dollars and they took up five thousand dollars and like they're like rolling in it oh i got yeah. cash <laughs> you know and yeah. and and that's what they'll do and also, the same thing that the same that they did. Another thing that people don't know is uh, uh, there's a there's a, a lot of things happening, shenanigans happen on like the the visual front. So like you have the in, in, Instagram influencers that are um, that will uh, 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 enhance their photos. Oh my god! Uh, yes, mm-hmm. and so they'll they'll make them out uh, to be better looking than they really are, and because of that, they get like. Uh, like Instagram, de- like, uh, uh, like what's it called? Affiliate uh, deals. Uh, deals. Yeah. They'll get deals. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll get sponsors. And, yeah. and, uh, I remember when I was teaching, uh, <laughs> this, this one's, this one student went to like some like convention where they had all these Instagram, uh, yeah. uh influencers. And he was like, he was like, yeah, they, 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 they they do not look like how they are uh, promoting themselves on these. Oh platforms. yeah, <laughs> well, like and the angles, especially yeah. for like, uh, it's just so freaking toxic. But like the angles that people are able to shoot themselves, I've like actually googled it before. Like, what what is this angle thing you're talking about? Like, what is a good angle? I don't think I know mm-hmm. what that is. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's a nightmare. And actually, like, you would think too. That that's a problem like that's a young person's problem but even as i'm a younger a, a mom of younger children okay like it doesn't go away when you become like a real adult and you've got yeah. kids like if anything i think it's even more pervasive and sneakier and more devastating because it looks like normalcy like, it's not normal to have, like, a super clean playroom with, like, all neutral wooden toys and a perfectly white clean carpet. That's, like, yeah. red flag if you see that. And uh, Just that's playing something. with my kid. Right. Like, with my hair looking so good and, like, I just had a baby and, like, you – have you not eaten one lick of food in the past month? Like, what are you yeah. doing? Anyway, um, yeah, I've, that's something I've – thought a lot about I actually had when I first got going I had a business coach for a little bit of time just because I I know nothing about like building websites and marketing and all that stuff and it was it was super super helpful and she would talk to me about that stuff and I wondered like 
do I want to care about getting followers on Instagram? Because to me, that would mean like more opportunities for people to buy artwork. That's all I was thinking about. Um, and I quickly like decided I would not obsess over that because it is so, it's so gross. It's so gross. The buying of followers is mind boggling. I think uh, there there's a, a a tipping point though, um, to some degree, where um, genuineness is 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 becoming more of a of, of a better currency. Yeah, uh, I agree. Than than um, this this false idolatry type thing that's happening. Yeah. You know, like, like um, it's, st- it sucks that it's still happening uh, to y- younger generations where like we, people are following people simply because of the, they're good looking, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and not on the, on the merit of their work or the, the merit of them as an individual, but just simply because I like how this person looks. And, um, right. you know, what are you going to well, do? <laughs> and it's like, you can kind of like feel like you're connecting with those people. You know, like you can send them a message. You can comment on their things. Like it's, it's weirder. Like when we were growing up, maybe you could see like a celebrity in a, in a magazine and be like, uh, like he's so hot. I'm into him. And like, now you can almost kind of really do that. Like it's the line is so blurred. You you, you you can to uh, to an extent. It depends on how uh, busy the person is, or actually, right, no. yeah, it depends on how busy their their rep are. Uh, their their <laughs> rep is uh, entering right, all these manages deep. their stuff. Yeah, all Have these DMs. Been, there's a really good um, social. There's a really good TikTok. Do you do you get on TikTok? Like, I have a TikTok. I. I have tried like five times to make a TikTok. Not my jam. I just consume it. It's like my sacred nighttime activity. Like I don't do it all day long. And then I do it at night. And it's my favorite. One of my favorite times of day. Anyway, but there's this like account called Influencers in the Wild. And it's like watching people make videos or take yeah. photos. And it's like, ah, that is so refreshing because it it is <laughs> it looks crazy to watch these people just like make a simple photo. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I, I love that. And I, I do hope on my account, what I'm trying to achieve, at least on my social media is like, try to find the place where, oh, that looks like a real person. Like that looks like someone that like, yeah. I understand and know. And yeah. what she's doing is not necessarily that remarkable, but it does look refreshing, you know? Yeah. So for those that are watching right now, uh, uh Samantha can't, uh, uh, turn her, her camera on. It, it, it's broke. We we uh, uh we had some technical difficulties earlier, and it's just it's shot. We we don't know how to fix it, and we're just going to continue on with the audio. Uh, my apologies. I'll, I'll have to look into something. Maybe in the future. Maybe in the future, what I'll do is I'll make sure I'll make sure like the 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 guest will have like a thumbnail in in the background ready, so they can just if if the video cuts out said person can just put like a their like avatar you know yeah uh, like and that's something that 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 i should consider in the future and I, it never occurred to me that a camera yeah. would be what were you thinking yeah i know right it's the first time it's happened usually anyway, it's, I... usually if the camera comes off uh the person can't get back on anyway so i have to cut the video short so is this the first time this has ever happened uh, that the camera has cut off and the audio stays has stayed. Yeah. Whenever there is a, a like an audio visual visual problem, the the actual the guest either lost connection and could not get back on, or or yeah, that's basically what happened. Whenever that happened, I had to cut the 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 uh, on the very rare times that that's happened, I've had to cut the the uh, live stream because like they got disconnected and they couldn't even get back on. All right. Yeah, I'm putting the avatar up. Let's see if this works. Oh, so weird, right? I just selected an avatar and it wouldn't go there. But anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, so I have to look into that. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it, that is. It is interesting to to see that that actually happens. That that like you could. I've I've seen videos like what is influencers influencers out in the wild. Like I've seen videos where where uh, literally they're stopping traffic. Traffic. They're like mm-hmm. they're just, they're like just. I want to take a photo with me and my dog. I want to stop traffic. Traffic. Yeah. I, I, 
I'm actually saying you don't know. I don't know if you heard of this, but I'm saying traffic. Traffic. <laughs> because I, I'm I'm not I'm not putting the F in there. So I'm saying traffic and I keep noticing myself. I'm saying, am I saying traffic or traffic? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so they, they're stopping traffic or they're, they're, some of them are getting run over. Like, uh, right. like some, some, some TikTokers are doing like those videos where they have the, they hop out of the car and they're dancing. They're doing da, 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 dance. And then all of a sudden uh, uh, their ankle gets caught in the back of the tire and they get rolled over. Ah, like, what are you doing? Crazy. It's, like, it's like, and no one's driving the car. They don't even have like, they, if, at the very least, what you should have is you have like a pat, like a, like the, the, the side, like the a passenger on the, on the set passenger seat. Like kind of steering it and making sure that that if anything, goes, if anything goes bad, I'm gonna hop into the driver's seat and stop the car. But no, nope, they're just like letting it go. Like you have a forty thousand dollar car, you know. Like right. what if it starts going way faster than you can catch up to catch catch up to it, and you know, all of a sudden the car's in a ditch or gets in a wreck. You know, right? It's so no, I know. Funny. Well, then it's like. But this is just how life is now. And then I think I think I have all those thoughts like, oh, this is so stupid. This is so ridiculous. But here I am like scrolling through TikTok, liking the video. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm part of the problem. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by it all. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just I'm just fascinated by it all. And, and like, how old are you? Uh, I'm hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, are you there? Oh. Oh. I was um, I, I'm fascinated by it. And I'm, I'm uh, we were talking about how we we create this illusion of, of grand grandeur and, yeah. uh, and and like i also often think that a, a lot of parents or a lot of fan like people our age will like they kind of grandstand like they it's like a, especially on like facebook you do like a a kind of like a, a a social media keep it up with the joneses type of thing mm -hmm. right? where you're like you're just making yourself look better than you really are and and mm -hmm. it's i and i and i believe that's probably why um, like people are sadder. They're, they're more depressed than they ever been. They've ever been, you know? Totally. Well, especially like when it's, it's not even just the face of what you're seeing. It's, it's like reading into it and really like making up a story that might not be true. So like you might see someone on a vacation and you're just thinking like, you know, they're just sharing a picture of themselves on vacation. It might be innocuous. It might actually be a really shitty picture. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not trying to be an influencer, but you're still sitting there like, how are they able to afford to take their whole family on a vacation to Mexico? And like, then you start thinking like, well, I can't do that. Am I doing something wrong? Like, what have I fucked up in my life that I'm not taking my family on a vacation to Mexico? When in reality, like maybe that family's like grandparents are paying for it. So yeah. you don't actually know all the things. And it's, uh, it can be really hard to uh, not take that stuff and run with it. My question is what, what is a vacation? I know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Like, what is a vacation where it's not centered around, like, well, we have to go to this wedding or, like, my family lives there? Right. I don't even know. I, 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 like, I don't know. Like, that. When I, was, when I, I always say that to uh, my friends. are like, I went on vacation. Like, like, what's that? Tell me more about that. <laughs> uh, like, oh, this is thing where you, you go to another location and you, you – so I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't I like you, you go to another place and you you have fun and how how's that work you know right. and like the climate's different and you're paying to do that <laughs> right exactly yeah but I, I it's always it's always very interesting it, it's so interesting that it, and so prevalent that people make entire entire YouTube channels and entire TikTok uh, platforms on it poking fun at it of it. And yeah. there's there is a whole niche market for that. You know it's bad when there there is a market for it. Yes. When it gets when it gets to that point where like people can make fun of it and it's or it's like a or they say it's like it's like a meme now, basically. Yeah. 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 I, I'm always like interested to know. So working in the summer camp, I'm the people that work for me are like 16 to 20 years old. So it's that like real gen z like i'm getting all the things it's kind of like a crash course in like what's cool and hip these days it's kind of nice but um i do think that there's a little bit of a pretty significant movement to get rid of some of that polished saccharine yeah you know 
not all that glitters is gold type stuff. Like they're far more interested in like the reality of it all. I, I'm sure there's something we haven't figured out that's also problematic about it. But I'm I'm hopeful that people are getting why like it's cool to be um a weirdo these days. I guess it's always been cool to be a weirdo. Like I, when we were in high school, it was cool to be a weirdo if you were the right kind of weirdo. What's a right right kind of weirdo? You know, like if you were um if you were actually if you actually had unattended mental health issues and problems in your home and real stuff that made you stand out from other people that sadly was not considered like a cool kind of weird right that was like whisper weird like that person's weird (laughs) but then there's like you know like emo weird or like kind of hipster weird Mm -hmm. that type of thing um Anyway, I mean, kids, these, the younger generations are just far more up to speed on like mental health stuff in general, which is great to see. I think yeah. that that's something we could all afford to pay more attention to. <laughs> Pro- probably the reason why they're more more aware of it now is because the thing that they're holding in their hand is actually propagating it a little bit, making it worse. Totally. Yeah. Like, like. It, it, it really is making things worse. And there's science behind it. I'm not, I'm not claiming anything. This is like, there's like <laughs> actual studies and uh, that that's, that's contributing to it. You yeah. Know? Um, and of course you'd feel bad for yourself. If you, if, if all you saw was, is people doing great all the time and you're like, yeah. Oh, they doing so great, man. I'm, I'm working 50 hours a week and eating ramen noodles and uh and, and uh, get the protein <laughs> i want i throw i put an egg in there you know because uh, i want i gotta eat be healthy i, I don't i don't uh, uh I, I uh throw away the 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 sodium packet because that's bad for your whatever it is it's bad for you i guess uh yeah um but yeah it, it it's it's a major problem um and uh it's I, it's good to hear that there's a flip side a flip like uh like a a a Kind of a like little a, shift. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, so Samantha, I want to I want to know something. Um Yeah. What is a uh What's a dream project for you? What do you want, what do you what are you doing? What are you looking for forward to doing in the future? Like what's something you want to really start focusing on? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I guess there's like two sort of things that I work on which is selling art and making art they're different right um as far as making art goes oh gosh I I would love to start making really big like almost like installations um, I really like the idea of art work. Like I always say, I, I actually don't refer to myself as a painter that much. Like that's the easy thing to say. I always, I call it like, I make art, like I'm an art maker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really like the idea of walking into a space just consumed with the thoughts that are like the things that are in my head. So like if those checks that or the grids, for example, like I would love to make just like an entire room filled to the brim with like glitter and colors and like in your face, like really this um, like experience. I think that would be very cool. And then a little bit more like uh, consumable art, like if people are purchasing, I would love, I I would just want to make things bigger. I think where I'm at right now, things are smaller because of kind of what we had been talking about before. Like I have to pick up and go all the time. I can't just like spend all this time making one thing. Yeah. Um, I would really love to be a go-to place for people to purchase real art from a real person, maybe even get other people involved. Maybe it's just my own stuff. Um, I'm interested in the idea. I have these on my website. I have these things called minis. And they are um, panel, like little canvas panels that have, it's basically collage. And I make them to order. They all look a little different. Um, I like the idea of 
readily available original art that isn't like doesn't take me hours to make and does, or days to make and that someone can actually buy it's super affordable and they can be like this is from an artist like I bought real art like I'm an art collector now you know so kind of like extending you know opening up a whole new or tapping into a whole new untapped market of people that want to buy art like the people that are going to home goods and buying some dumb llama with like gold filigree <laughs> on canvas and like you know thousands of other people have could have that in their home you know like why don't you trade that in for something just a little bit better <laughs> like a lot better mm-hmm. so i would like to see filling in that spot i think that that's a a place that people and and part of that none of that really has to do with making art so much as it has to do with reaching those people and letting them know like hey you are qualified to buy art from an artist you don't have to know anything about it you just have to like it and you have to pull the trigger and buy it and boom you're an art collector samantha Mm -hmm. uh i just want to say thank you so much for uh yeah taking, taking time out of your day to talk to me Sure. I know we had a few hiccups with the the, know, the live stream, but you know it is what it is, and uh, just try to uh, live with it and get better from uh, this experience. But I just want to say thank you for your time and uh, <laughs> yeah, talking to me great. and sharing your story, talking about your artwork, your life, your kids, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff is it yeah. was uh, very fun. Yeah. Um, before we go, I, I want to ask where can people find you online. Where can people get in touch? Yeah. So on Instagram, I am at Mother Art, spelled the way it's spelled, STL, which is for St. Louis. Fun fact, I did try to just have Mother Art that's taken, which is a bummer. And then my website is www.motherartstl.com. Also Mother Art was taken. I even tried to buy it, but it's far too expensive for me right now. (laughs) And um, yeah, so and, you know, I... I'm really responsive via email. I tend to my website every day. I'm really active on Instagram and I would love to see people there. All right. Well, thank you, Samantha. Thank you so much, everyone that watched. If this is something that you like watching, if you like hearing uh, artist stories from uh, from guest artists and uh, artists around the world and you enjoyed live art stream and you felt that this was very valuable, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Um, I do daily live art streams and I also interview artists every week or every other week, depending on how well I get my scheduling in order. So just, I just want to say thank you so much. And I hope you all have, uh, have a wonderful day. Samantha, thank you so much. Thank I you. Just say, everyone have a wonderful night. Cheers. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye.